Hey folks, welcome to Bear Mountain. This week we are in the tunnel and uh, last time we've been in here was probably, oh, maybe early part of December. Uh, but I kind of wanted to show you some of the projects that we got working on and kind of how things are coming along. Being that we just went through the uh, winter solstice and so we went through the shortest day of the year, things are actually starting to move ahead now uh, that we're in the first week of January. We've already seen some changes already, so let's take a look. So one of the things that I think has been uh, really uh, a very good positive has been these anemones and the ranunculus that we planted back in September. As you can already see, you can see one bud that's showing color. That's just happened in the last day. Uh, and I've got many other buds coming along. There's another one with some color. And so we're about to, I think, break out into some pretty healthy blooms. You can see the, the bloom uh, stalks coming up and uh, we've got quite a few so we're gonna have a nice patch of blooming anemones here probably in another week uh, if it takes that long although we are projected to get some pretty cold weather next week and we'll have to do a lot of frost protection but uh, in general the plants look really healthy uh, I've got to start I think at this point making sure that I get water soluble calcium phosphate on these guys uh, that will help uh, make sure that we don't end up with an aphid problem or something like that as these guys go into the bloom mode. Now the ranunculus, I mean, they're looking really pretty healthy, but in a general sense, uh, they're not, the stems aren't as vigorous as I'd hoped. And I think uh, that's definitely a shortage of calcium. I know my soil in here has a lower amount of calcium than it should. So I definitely have got to do the same thing with these guys or I'm going to end up with aphids on, on this kind of foliage. Uh, but I'm guessing too that we're probably going to be blooming earlier uh, this year, probably uh, particularly if, if we stay as, as warm and generally speaking as we have been. Uh, the tunnel like I'm in it right now is, is uh, we're kind of sunny today, so it's about 70 degrees in here. And so these guys are actually you know, doing pretty good. They're still putting out new leaves. So um, we'll see how this goes, but I definitely got to get, I got to get the calcium on here. Okay, this is the weirdest thing. And I'm thinking I'm going to take advantage of this. You see that plant right there? That's a potato that sprouted from uh, one of my potatoes that I had growing in here on last season's harvest that I missed. And I've got more than one. Uh, all these little spuds that I inadvertently missed are now coming up and they're I mean they don't look super healthy they look pretty yellow but the fact that they're germinated is pretty amazing so this is the same thing down here this is an area where um, we just had some mulch left on it this is where we tried to do that experiment back in in um, uh, for fall potatoes and it never really panned out but guess what they're doing now now they're germinating so I'm thinking what I've got to do in this area is probably is uh, I've got a bunch of potatoes that are in the cooler uh, that are early varieties that have kind of begun to put little buds and sprouts on. And I'm thinking once I get through this cold patch here uh, next week, I'm going to be planting these guys now because uh, nature in here is telling me that the uh, with the tunnel effect and everything, the soil is warm enough for these guys to grow. The kale has just really recovered tremendously. We've been harvesting on these guys quite a bit, but you can see I've still got a lot of leaves in here that are just, they're ready for eating. And uh, so, I mean, they're actually in pretty good shape. I got to go through and pick out some of the older leaves that are maybe starting to senesce to make sure I don't end up with a slug problem. But in general, this red Russian kale is, uh, it's been really good flavored and uh, the leaves are looking really good. This is, this one has been a definite win. As soon as we got past that, that, uh, caterpillar green uh, cabbage looper problem that we had back in the fall and you'll recall I did a video on using Jadam pesticides to kind of get that under control. These guys have been in really good shape. So I wanted to check underneath the tarp that we put over. This is going to be for our onion bed coming up in uh, late January and uh, it definitely has killed off the weeds. It's done a good job. It's been about four almost five weeks now that that tarp has been on it and uh, so I'm thinking uh, these guys are going to be in pretty good shape. I did a light application of biochar in here as well as the uh, grass, uh, hay, compost, rotted compost. And so I'm thinking the soil in here is actually, the, the soil in here is actually going to be 
uh, ex in excellent shape. I mean, look at that, nice and friable, good looking stuff. And so um, we're gonna be ready to plant the onions in here, which we're gonna be starting this next week. Uh, they'll be able to go in the ground by the end of January. Now the spinach has been, it's kind of been a mixed bag for us. We are taking a lot of spinach off of this, but at the same time too, I've been fighting slugs and still have little green worms that are not cabbage looper. I'm not sure what the variety of these guys are. And I, I haven't used any of the Jadam insecticide in here and I really need to do that. Um, but I'm still getting quite a bit of spinach off of this, you know, for salads. And then over here on this side, are the romaine lettuces and you can kind of see there i've been harvesting leaves on them uh but they're definitely growing i mean these these guys have changed dramatically like in the last 10 days they've uh, really perked up and started to grow even more and then i've got some uh, winter density in there uh, towards the back and uh, i've also got another type of um, uh, romaine it's a red romaine i forgot the exact name of it but we're getting a nice variety of spinach kale lettuce and that's keeping us in greens uh, uh, really since, oh, I'd say really the first part of November, last part of October, we've been harvesting greens off this. So I've got to, again, next week when I start the onions, I need to start another round of spinach and lettuce and uh, with an eye on, you know, how they're gonna perform, uh, being ready to put in the ground and then perform for us, uh, probably looking at March. Um, I'll be able to, I think, harvest off this lettuce and spinach for about another month. And um, so far, though, the slugs really haven't damaged the lettuce much at all, which is kind of interesting. They've really gone after the spinach over there, and I think it's because they're towards the outside. Um, but the, um, and the lettuce itself, I haven't had really any pests on it at all. None of the worm problem that I had on the spinach or anything like that. So that's been a positive. So what I'm going to be doing today in this area where you see... Nothing much. There's actually delphinium plants that are dormant in here. And these are the Guardian series uh, delphiniums. And I've got a bunch of uh, empty spots, so I'm gonna kinda take this longer row that runs all the way up to where those potatoes are, uh, back down to uh, where my lettuce is, and kinda try to consolidate this into, into a more uh, densely packed area and free up more area right in here for uh, lettuces or other greens or whatever else that we want to put in here as veg. Okay, this area right here is, um, it, it, you had the pumpkins on it, and you can kind of tell, let me try to pull this back so I can keep it open here. Um, these guys are kind of rotted down, but uh, there's still a lot of refuse on the top. But what I have to do for this bed is I have to put the compost on it, and the biochar like I did on the other side, and this is ready to go. Now this area is going to be used for uh, early things like, um, we'll probably do a mixture of vegetables in here, some of them uh, early green beans or peas. Uh, we're going to be uh, definitely trying to get a head start on our dried beans this year. So this is, this is about a 60, maybe more than that, 65 foot row. Uh, so we're going to be able to get quite a bit of different veg in here. And so that'll be my project after I get the delphinium done. I've got to get this um, ready and get the tarp back on it to kind of make sure I kill off any uh, sprouting grasses or things. You can kind of see on the edge that I've got some weed problems that I can easily scuff out. So that's not too big of a deal. Um, so far, I think this is uh, the tarping has is, is helped during this low light time of the season. It definitely got rid of the um, weed problem that we were starting to have on the other side. So I've got a few weeks before I'll be planting in here. Probably this area will get planted uh, with those, like I said, the beans, the dried beans as, as part of early March. So I'm looking at most of this bed uh, going to be needed probably late February, early March. So I've got a good five weeks that I can let the biochar and the compost work and also apply a uh, Jadam microorganism solution to kind of help feed that and, and keep it going. And so the other thing that I want to do in this area too, on this bed here is I want to be able to put, um, you know, when you look at this, as like I said, we've got about a 60 foot area. I had really good luck on my first experiment with electroculture. And so I need to get another set of magnets and put in more of those magnetic antennas oriented to the north which is kind of a diagonal on the bed, but 
I want to be uh, testing this side out with this side over here. So I'm going to make sure that I get these guys, you know, I know how I amended over here and I want to make certain that I do the same amendments over here on this side, uh, as well as that this side will have the electric culture on it and then this side won't. So what I'm going to be doing is, is kind of like if I'm planting some uh, onions over here, I want to make sure I have a patch over here. So I want to be able to kind of control, you know, have a control basically, which is over here on this side with the experimental bed over here. I think I'd like to know what the effects of the electroculture did really well with the beans. You can go back and check out that video I did last, I think it was in September. Uh, I put together kind of what the impact was and we had um, a greater harvest, we had less insect damage. And then so the beans actually uh, way outperformed what we had over on this side. Uh, this side over here ended up um, producing a bit, but it quickly during the hottest part of the season got a really bad case of spider mites. While the material we planted on, on the center bed that had the electroculture on it, we got some spider mite damage, but not much at all compared to what uh, it really, it took the, I mean, it just basically cut the harvest short on, on the side over here. That was the control. So I want to see what the effects are uh, on other crops like the onions and uh, maybe also um, I've got potatoes. I'm going to put the potatoes in here. This is the, this is the side that had the electroculture and I'm going to be putting uh, more potatoes in here. So we're going to be able to kind of see how potatoes work with electroculture. And then I think I'm also going to maybe try to figure out how to put some potatoes in here. Although I think I'm going to need most of the space for my onions and shallots. But um, I, I definitely, when I, when I plant something with electroculture, I want to check out, see what happens without. You know, it's just to kind of keep doing a cross check on things. So now I took a walk over to what we formerly used to call the crate house. We used to have, and we'll put some pictures in here, we used to raise our anemones and uh, other crops like lilies and some smaller herbs and things in here in a crate system. And we're pulling that out. And you can kind of see I've got fabric cloth and things that were underlayment on it. I've got the crates out. I've got my irrigation set over to the side over here. And this, this was potting soil that had been in those crates. So I've got a pretty good windrow to add into this. But uh, we're going to create this. Um, we got about 50 feet of this 100 foot greenhouse that we're going to put into uh, row crops uh, or veggies, not real row crops really isn't the right term, but basically it's going to be in ground planted. What we are going to be raising in here, probably mostly going forward, is going to be small herbs, um, some flowers, and um, kind of things that you wouldn't say are super high production stuff but our, our nice add-ons, um, it'll be, we'll be able to use the season extension as well as it'll give us uh, protection from deer uh, to kind of keep that problem. Uh, so we're kind of orienting these tunnels to produce things that we have severe deer pressure problems with because we can kind of protect them better. Uh, and as well, we get a jump on the season, plus we get, we get the uh, extra time in the fall too. Now the back end of the tunnel back over there that's going to be our fertilizer operation. We've already got fertilizer storage back there. We got to remove some of those extra crates and then we've got the blocks that we had um, our crates on. So we got to take care of those guys, but that's going to be a kind of a cleaner operation. And this is where we'll be able to, you know, make and store most of our Jadam solutions that we're going to be using in our tunnels. So when you look at the ground, you can kind of see that um, it's been kind of abused. So it's going to take a while for us to to get this uh, back into shape. And it's got some fungal growth on molds growing on the top, but this is a really heavy clay. Uh, and actually the topsoil is pretty thin out here. This is kind of a transition zone on our property where we're going from um, uh, a fairly decent loam to uh, a pretty heavy uh, clay that has uh, sometimes has issues with drainage. Although this area is tiled, so we don't get standing water here anymore. The soil type was kind of oriented to having um, standing water on it sometimes during the year in the winter time. So we're going to have a lot of work to do from biology standpoint. There's no, I mean, this is what's going to be interesting about this is, is this area is um, really had no growing plants in it for at least 10 years. 
So we'll see how we can, you know, get this soil back up and, and uh, producing. It's going to be an interesting time. I think it's going to take a bit, you know, maybe a season or two for it to get back to rocking and rolling uh, without having to add in, you know, terribly too much more other than what you see here is that extra stuff that we used to use our uh, crate in our crate system as kind of a, a starting point. So these are the first two tunnels we've been working on. Um, kind of a little bit slow during the, uh, the winter time, as you can tell, I had another project I was also working on getting rid of all those ugly blackberries. But uh, these two are, are should be up and running in the next month or so. So that's a good start. Plus I've got three other tunnels that have been idle for the last two years since we've been out of the flower business. We kind of, uh, they've kind of been laying fall fallow and I would say mm, we got a bit of a weed problem. But we're gonna wanna bring those guys up into production too this year. So I'll be cleaning those guys up and, and making some changes in them. Um, and, and this is kind of be our food production is going to be mostly in tunnels, but we're also going to have some of the bigger stuff, uh, outside, uh, like as an example, particularly things that we need in our kitchen garden and things of that, that are close to the house. So we're going to have that up there, fruit trees, etc. Those things are outside. So this is kind of what we're going to focus in on and keeping a better control because we do have wildlife problems on the farm here. And that is something that we have to always kind of be cognizant of. It, we have a lot of herbivores. We have rabbits, we have nutria, we have deer. Um, so we have to keep a, keep a handle on that, plus the usual small rodents and things that can also get into things. So our idea is, is that since we already had these assets, you know, it made sense for us to use them. So, I mean, if, if somebody was just starting out, you know, you probably would have one tunnel, but we've got five. So we want to use them and we want to get as much out of them as we can from a food standpoint. So anyway, I want to thank you for uh, just hanging with me on a talking, walking video. I, I hope uh, we can put enough pictures in here that you don't get too bored. And thank you again for uh, following us and you guys stay safe out there. We'll catch you on next week's video. Bye-bye.